Hi guys, good morning. The purpose of this video is to go over the Unit 10 Part 1 Study Guide, which has been placed for you under Modules, Instructional Materials. All right. Now, I've also put together a worked out copy of the solutions, just in case you prefer that, but I'm also going to go through it step by step with you on this video, uh, kind of to simulate what we would have done in class if I actually had my legitimate whiteboard and classroom available. Okay. So, part one. On the test, this is going to be multiple choice, and they're going to ask it pretty much the same way. All right, you're going to have to be able to identify particular lines or particular segments in a circle and classify them. So let's go through. Line BD, because it's a line and it goes through the circle twice, would be classified as a secant line. Okay? Line BJ, by contrast, only touches the circle once. And so that would be a tangent line. Segment HF goes all the way across the circle, and it's a segment, but it happens to pass through the center. So even though, yes, it is a chord, the better way of describing that would be a diameter. HA only goes halfway across the circle, so that would be a radius, all right? Segment CD, it goes across the circle, right? It's a segment but it doesn't pass through the center, so we would just call that a chord. Point H, well, this is a point where a tangent line touches a circle, so we call that a point of tangency. Point A, several of you guys have called this the middle. A better way of describing it would be the center of the circle. Arc H, G, F, let's trace it out. H, G, F. Yes, it's an arc, but because it happens to go all the way halfway across the circle, right? So HGF is a semicircle. Uh, we call that a semicircle. And for the purpose of solving problems, you want to make sure you remember that's 180 degrees. This last one, I didn't actually draw on the original diagram, so let me draw that in for you. All right, D, A, G. Okay, so do you notice how the vertex of that particular angle is at the center of the circle? Therefore, we would call that a central angle. That's going to contrast with an inscribed angle, which is a little bit later in the unit. All right, and we'll talk about a little bit later in this video. All right, so if you guys know that vocabulary, you should be okay on that portion of the test. Okay. Oh, no, I hope the tape holds. All right, next up, some relatively easy... So I got to actually see the questions here. Uh, some relatively easy questions on area, circumference, arc length, and that sort of thing. All right. Okay. So let's actually draw out number two. I'm working on question two. So a circle, right, has a diameter of 18. So I'm going to write that down. Diameter of 18. And they want us to find the area on the circumference. All right. That's pretty easy. All right. Area is defined as pi r squared. So if the diameter is 18, what does that mean that my radius is? Well, it takes two radii to make a diameter, so the radius is 9. So pi times 9 squared gives me 81 pi. And of course, uh, if it were a question where they gave it to you as a decimal, you would take your calculator and do 81. Oops, 81 times pi. And you get like 254.5, all right? But again, there'll be some questions where you leave it as pi. There'll be some questions where they'll ask, ask you for it as a decimal. And because you have a calculator, and I can't really control whether or not you have a calculator, uh, it'll be pretty darn easy, right? Okay, circumference. Remember that circumference, there are two different formulas. We can use 2 pi r, or if we want to make life easier, we can just use pi d. So because I know the diameter is 18, it would just be pi times 18, which is just 18. All right, so pretty straightforward on that. All right, I wouldn't worry too much. Now, the hardest that an area or a, um, a circumference problem can get is one like number three, where instead of giving you the radius, diameter, or whatever, asking you to calculate area and circumference, they might give you the result. They might give you the area itself and ask you to back solve for a radius and then find something else. All right, so let's take a look at this one. The area of a circle is 81 pi. Let's write that out. So the area is 81 pi. Now, do you guys know a formula for the area of a circle? I certainly hope so. That would be pi r squared equals 81 pi, right? 
And then, of course, to get rid of multiply pi, I can divide by pi on both sides. That gives me this lovely equation, r squared equals 81, which technically is a quadratic. How do I undo a square? I take the square root, right? So in this case, the radius would be 9. With that being said, if they ask me to find the circumference of the circle, all I have to do is use my circumference formula, which is 2 pi r. Do I know the radius now? Yes, I do. The radius is 9. So 2 pi times 9, 18 pi. All right. So again, my only uh, note of caution on those questions, make sure you guys read carefully. All right. A lot of you guys got burned on the last test because they asked for simplified fractions. All right. For the trigonometric ratios on this test, make sure you read. Are they asking you for the radius or are they asking you for circumference or are they asking you for area? All right, so the concepts are not hard, but you guys got to make sure you read the question and you will have ample time, but make sure you guys read the question first and carefully. All right. All right. Uh, let me see. Can I see number four? <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. Let's take a look at question number four. An arc has radius four and central angle 120. So let's actually draw this out. Once again, which question are we looking at? We're looking at question number four. All right. Okay, so for number four, uh, <laughs> all right, it's like 120 degrees, right? And they tell me that the radius is four, and they asked me to find the uh, arc length. Okay, fair enough. So I actually have, luckily for me, an arc length formula, don't I? And that's going to be, by the way, that letter is L, right? A cursive L, just in case anybody was uh, criticizing that. And that's going to be theta, which is the angle, over 360 times 2 pi r. Okay, let's actually just go and plug in. Theta is 120, so I'm going to say 120 over 360 times 2 pi times 4. Most of you guys should be able, using what you learned in 6th grade, to, be, uh, to reduce this fraction using a GCF. I can cross out the zeros, right? And then 12 over 36 reduces down to 1 third times 8 pi, so my final answer would just be 8 pi over 3. All right. Now, for question number 5, they ask you to repeat the problem, but the only difference is instead of doing the uh, arc length, they're asking you to find the area of a sector. So the only difference for that type of problem is this. You see how down here I had 2 pi r because arc length is a fraction of the circumference? Well, for the area of a sector, instead of doing times 2 pi r, I would just do times pi r squared, because it would be the fraction of the area. So let me rewrite this problem very simply. Area of a sector equals theta over 360 times pi r squared. Let's show each step. So I'm going to have 120 over 360 times pi times 4 squared, right? Okay, so far so good. So that's going to be 1 third times pi times 16 and I can just leave that as 16 pi over 3. All right. So again, a lot of people have asked, do I need to actually memorize these? And my answer is uh, not really. If you can simply remember the formula for circumference is 2 pi r, and you can remember that the formula for area is pi r squared, then all you need to remember is that arc length is a fraction of the circumference, and the uh, area of a sector is a fraction of the area of the circle. Okay? All right, let's press on. Uh, number six um, is a little bit difficult, uh, and I don't believe it's going to be on the regular test. So if there's any hardworking person watching this from my regular class, uh, you guys have kind of lucked out, right? It's not necessarily going to be on your unit test, but uh, it may show up in some form of like a PSAT or something like that. So let's go over it, all right? So this time they tell us the actual area of a sector. They give us the central angle, and they ask us to find the radius. Well, let's see how that's going to work, shall we? All right. So I'm going to write out my formula here. Area of a sector equals theta over 360 times pi r, r squared. Where did I get that? That's actually from the very, very first classwork video for this unit, right? So if you guys are confused, like, oh, I don't remember seeing that. Yes, you did. And if you don't know where to find the videos, oh my goodness, we got far bigger problems to talk about. Please message me immediately. Okay, so they tell me area of the sector. 
prime. And they tell me that's 48 pi. So I'm going to write that down. Then they also tell me the central angle, right? Which is 120. So I'm going to put that in right here. So 120 over 360. All right, let's do some simplifying. 120 over 360, we've already said before, I believe, is uh, one third, right? Okay, so this part is a little bit tricky for some of you guys for the algebra. Because I have a multiplied pi over here, I can get rid of a multiplied pi by dividing both sides by pi. So bye bye pi. And then to get rid of a multiply one third, I multiply both sides by the reciprocal. So in other words, I multiply both sides by three over one. That's gonna give me this. 144 equals r squared. How do I undo a square? I take the square root, and so I get that r equals 12. All right? So every so often you might end up with a problem like this where they're asking you to use the formula, right? But instead of just plugging in the theta and the radius, they might ask you to back solve for one of the other unknowns, okay? As I said, regular, uh, you probably don't have to worry about this too much, so I apologize if I wasted your time. Honors, yes, so please make sure, all right? And it could show up as either arc length or area of a sector, so be advised, all right? All right, let's press on. Okay, this is the arc measure part of the unit. All right, so let's go through that. This is question number seven on the unit 10 part one study guide. All right, so I've got a circle. I apologize if my drawing's not great, but again, bite me. I actually am thinking about getting a new whiteboard, but uh, you know, that's gonna take some time because it's considered to be a non-essential item, which is kind of funny. Okay, 65 uh, PCR, PCR, and then what is that, TQ? All right, so my advice on a problem like this is actually to start filling in before you know exactly what they're asking for, all right? And we'll kind of go over that in a minute. But basically, I wouldn't actually look at the exact things they're asking for. See if you can go around and fill in all the missing pieces before you look at what they're asking for. Let's use that strategy. Okay, first things first, vertical angles, right? Two intersecting lines form two pair of opposite congruent angles. So if this is 35, what's this? 35. Now notice, 35, 65, and this are a semicircle. How many degrees are there in a semicircle? 180, right? So if this and this add up to 100, how many degrees are left for over here? 80 degrees, all right? And last but not least, over here, I've got another semicircle, right? And so this semicircle over here would have to be 100 and, uh, what is that, 45, I believe? 145 degrees, because 145 and 35 make 180. Now, we're ready to go through and simply look at our arcs. The most important thing here is that because we're dealing with central angles, the central angles have the same measure as their arcs. Let me say that again. The central angle has the same degree measure as its arc. So if this is 35, what's this? 35 degrees. Then they ask us for RTV. Let's trace that out. R. Actually, you know what? Let me use my other color marker so you guys can see this visually. R. T. V. Oh my gosh. So it's like the entire circle except for this piece, right? So what's 360 minus 35? Uh, I think it would be 325, right? Oh gosh, I hope so. Yeah, I think it is. All right, then they ask us for PVR. Oh my god, that's just a semicircle. So that'd be 180 degrees. So then PQ, let's take a look. Uh, PQ over here would just be these two added up, which is 35 and 80, which makes 115. All right, so there will be a couple of these problems, all right, maybe like uh, two points each or so. Three basic things to remember. Big idea number one, there are 360 degrees in a circle. I don't think that comes as a surprise to anybody, but just in case. Big idea number two, semicircles have 180 degrees, that's big. And big idea number three, 
vertical angles are congruent. So if you guys can remember those three basic principles, these problems will actually go pretty well for you, I think. All right. All right. Now let's take a look at the last two. This is where it gets a little more challenging. All right. This is where we start dealing with inscribed angles and inscribed angles, as you guys remember, or I hope you remember from watching my videos, inscribed angles are different than regular central angles because their vertex is on the circle itself. All right, so let's take a look at this problem right here. This is question number eight. Okay, so I have A, O, B, C. There's 92, all of them. Okay, and there's X. Okay, so a couple things here, right? First of all, let's review the big idea behind an inscribed angle. An inscribed angle is half of its arc, or I can think about it as it takes two of these to make this. Problem is, I actually don't have enough information right now to do anything, so I'm gonna have to do something else first. Let's fill in some missing pieces. If this is a semicircle, how many degrees is it from A to B? 180 right? Then how many degrees, if I've used up 180 and I've used up 92, how many degrees are left for CB? Well, 180 and 92 make, what is that, 272? All right. So if I've used up 272 degrees and uh, I have 360 total, how many are left? Well, they'll 360 minus 272 should give me 88. And if it takes two of these inside ones, two with the inscribed angles to make the arc, how do I get rid of a multiplied two? Divide, and so I get x is 44, okay? So again, a little bit more involved. Um, regular, you may not seem one this quite this difficult where there are multiple steps, all right? For you guys, just make sure you remember that it takes two inscribed angles to make the arc that it opens up to. Honors, they may give you a couple problems where you have to put it all together, right? And what do I mean by that? I mean, you have to apply your understanding of arc measures alongside your understanding of inscribed angles. So just you've been warned, all right? Last but not least, let's take a look at question number nine, which deals with inscribed quadrilaterals. And inscribed is just a fancy way of saying uh, it's inside the circle, right? Like each of the each of the vertices, each of the corners is on the circle itself. Oop de doop, oop de doop, oop de doop. All right, so it's not perfect, but you know what? Just just deal with it, right? Okay. All right, so here's what I'm gonna tell you guys, right? Uh, the, the basic idea that this problem is looking at is do you understand the property of inscribed quadrilaterals? It's very simple, right? The opposite angles in an inscribed quadrilateral have to add up to 180. In other words, this right here on the 87 have to sum up to 180. So what plus 87 equals 180? That would be 93. All right. The same thing over here. What plus 78 equals 180? This over here would have to be 102. Now, I know that's not necessarily what they were asking us for, but, you know, just bear with me for a second. Now, notice, do you guys see, and I'm going to highlight this in a different color, do you guys see how the 87 is actually an inscribed angle? I'm going to say that again. The 87 is an inscribed angle because it opens up to an arc, and its vertex is on the circle itself. Let's take a look for a second at that arc that it opens up to, shall we? All right. So what that means is that this whole thing right here has to be twice the 87. All right. Let me say that again. That whole thing right there, guys, has to be twice the 87. The same thing, and I'll do this in a slightly different color for you. Oh, no. Um, you see the 78? I'm going to do this one in blue. The 78 is also an inscribed angle, and its arc is like this. So it's going to take two of those 78s to make the B and the 36 together. 
let's actually put that into an algebraic form. 278 equals b plus 36. It takes 154. I'm oh, sorry, no, 156. That's my bad. 156 equals b plus 36. Therefore, 120 equals b. So I'm going to replace this right now with 120. I can set up now a similar equation over here in order to find this unknown, right? I'm just going to call this x. It takes 287s to make the 120 and the x together. So 2 times 87 equals 120 plus x. That means it's going to take 174 equals 120 plus x and 54 equals x. So I'm going to replace that right here. And last but not least, look at this. It goes back to an arc measure problem. I've used up 54, 120, and 36. How many degrees are left for this last missing piece, letter C? Well, 120 and 36 makes 156. 156 and 54, I believe, should make 210. And just do 360 minus 210, and you'll get 150. All right? So... That's the basic idea behind the main concepts you're going to see on Unit 10 Test Part 1. Again, a few things in this video were only for honors, specifically back solving for a variable with arc length and, and uh, area of a sector, as well as some of these more difficult problems where they ask you to do uh, multiple concepts in one with inscribed quadrilaterals, inscribed angles, and arc measures. That being said, looking forward, a lot of this actually is pretty good practice for something like an SAT or a PSAT, which is your key to scholarship money down the road. Okay? So, uh, thanks for watching, and please don't downvote, downvote my videos. It really just makes me kind of depressed. Thanks so much.